Hello, I'm David Ruzik, Illinois Energy Prof. And I'm here today to tell you about what it would take to decarbonize air travel. So to start with that, let's look at U.S. energy production and consumption. The show's 2018, it's pre-pandemic. Things don't change dramatically year to year though. The first thing I wanna point out is that of all of the energy we use in the United States, 80%, 80% is carbon-based, all right? That's oil, natural gas, and coal. You might say, well, what do we do with that? Well, part of it we use to make electricity. That's mostly the coal and natural gas. But also, we use it to run our homes, run our industries. Our homes are heated by natural gas. Some industries still use coal. They also use some oil up there in that red. Now, what if instead we could do things that can be replaced by electricity? Certainly we can make more electricity and we can make it not with carbon-based, but you can make it with nuclear and you can make it with solar, hydro, um, wind, right? Things like that, the green renewable energies. That can go into electricity and the electricity can run our industries and our businesses and our homes. But what's left? transportation. Transportation uses around 30% of the energy in the United States. And in the rest of the world, it's 25%. That's a big chunk. So you might say, okay, well, let's look at transportation. The bulk of transportation is diesel fuel and motor fuel, gasoline, cars, trucks, and you may have heard that many car manufacturers are saying, we're going to go all electric by a certain date. Wonderful. That means that these portions of the transportation industry could indeed be replaced by electricity. But then we come to the other parts, particularly jet fuel. So let's look a little more closely at it. So it's all about energy storage. This is a fascinating graph because on the bottom, we've got energy per unit volume, per size. How much space does it take up? Remember, we're talking about airplanes. And on the vertical axis, it's how much energy per weight. It's clear that you don't wanna carry super heavy things up in the air rather carry people and cargo. And this is a range to talk about everything with respect to gasoline. And jet fuel is very close to it, all right? And you can see that what you'd like is something that's lighter weight and um, takes uh, not more volume, and you'd like to be up here, but there isn't anything up here. But the problem is, the way you might do an electric airplane is you'd have to have batteries and they're way down here. They have a lot less energy per weight and they have a lot more volume per unit energy. You might say, oh, come on, maybe that's my old fashioned lead acid car battery. But man, hasn't technology done bad? What about Tesla, right? What about these battery factories and all this cool stuff? Well, let's look. Okay, the newest Tesla battery, at least the newest that you can read about on the web, is the 2170. And you know what that basically means. It means it's uh, 21 millimeters wide and 70 millimeters tall, okay? So, um, you know, that's, that's pretty cool, all right? 21 millimeters, 70 millimeters. All right, that's the Tesla battery. And um, it's good, it, it has a record number of 260 watt hours, that's like joules, but kind of easier to think about because we always think about watts and how long a 100 watt light bulb is on, right? Per kilogram. 
And, um, and you think that's great for a battery, but jet fuel is 12,000 watt hours per kilogram. <laughs> that's a lot different. That's why they were so far apart on that graph. What about uh, volume, energy per unit volume? 758 watt hours per liter for this battery. Again, tops of batteries. But jet fuel is more than 10 times more, right? 9,700 watt hours per liter. Liquid fuels have more energy per weight and take much less volume. You might say, well, okay, is that offset by cost? <clears throat> well, the cost of electricity, I know that at my house I pay 11 and a half cents per kilowatt hour. Um, maybe you buy it in bulk and charging at airports, I don't know, five cents per kilowatt hour. And if I do the same thing for today's price of jet fuel, which is up at the moment, and I compare the amount of energy in it, jet fuel is 4.6 cents per kilowatt hour. So there's no giant gain in how much you're going to spend for the same amount of energy from these. But these space considerations are major. It's more than just energy storage. Let's compare a jet engine to an electric engine. Jet engines burn the fuel directly and the exhaust of the fuel is what provides the thrust. You can see it in a dramatic fashion. With electric engines, basically they turn motors, which turn propellers. And they're actually more efficient, and that's good. The thing is, jets are faster. Yes, there are, you know, the records here and there, but on average it might be two or three times faster than a propeller plane. So, this is not to say electric planes are impossible, all right? There was recently an a announcement that uh, United Airlines uh, decided to work with this company and they're going to buy these things as regional jets. They're not jets, they replace regional jets. Um, 19 passenger, 250 mile range, supposed to be available in 2026. So, so, you know, you can do it. You might go slower, but if it's a small hop, so what? But this is not going to get you long distances fast, all right? If I want to go from New York to London or Chicago to San Francisco or San Francisco or L.A. to Sydney, we're going to need not an electric plane. We're going to need something fueled by a liquid fuel. That is the key for at least what we're used to as long haul, relatively quick, air travel. What about a renewable liquid fuel? So in the US today, 10% of all our gasoline is ethanol. You know that you go to any pump, it says may contain 10% ethanol, it probably does contain 10% ethanol, all right? And that's primarily made from corn. This graph shows the use of corn, and since about 2011, 40% of our corn goes into making ethanol. Now, if you manage to um, electrify all of our transportation, right? What are we going to do with all that corn? So what if you could take ethanol and turn it into jet fuel, which is kerosene? Now, kerosene is a distillate from oil, right? You have that big distilling column. You can go see, you know, one of my videos on this and, you know, your heat's down here and the stuff that comes off at the hottest temperatures, right? You get diesel here, and here is where you're gonna get the kerosene, and then you're gonna get gasoline, right? So the chains go down, and then finally up here you get, you know, maybe some methane or other gases, right? That's how distilling works. But you could still take some of the smaller things, like an ethanol made from corn, and turn it 
into jet fuel. And you say, yeah, really? You can do that? Uh, yeah, you can. This was a great journal paper, very detailed, right? It's uh, 2017, how to do ethanol to jet and other things. Um, and the good thing is that this is actually approved by the FFA, right? ATJSPK. Um, and, you know, there is, a, is, is quite a method, a possibility of doing this. Now, is it perfect? I'm sure not. Um, does it cost too much? Maybe, right? I think it's too early to tell. You need to get up to scale. That paper describes some ways to do it. There might be others. If you can do it without adding hydrogen, that's even better. So early to tell on economics. And of course, any economic argument always depends on the price of oil, right? The price of oil is going to determine a lot of things. Oil's way, way up. All the biofuels are much more appealing. And if there is ever a carbon tax, if there's a tax on non-renewable sources of carbon, that obviously changes the economic picture as well. And I should say that even though ethanol to corn-based or biofuel-based ethanol to kerosene is one option, there are certainly other ways to make green liquid fuels as well. So, in conclusion, 80% of our current energy comes from fossil fuels. That's a lot. And that's also worldwide, maybe even a higher percentage. If we want to drive that number down, it's going to take a bunch of work. And examining how to do it is, is one of the reasons I made this video. Keep in mind, there are ways to combat global warming in addition to this. Take a look at my geoengineering video, for instance. If we want to reduce this, the key is going to be electrification. That's going to be the primary method to uh, replace our use of fossil fuels. Air travel is probably the most difficult system to electrify, but if I look at magnitude in the United States, there is enough biomass conversion already going on into liquid fuels, about the same amount of total energy that would be able to be used to run our fleet of jets. That's what you need to know about decarbonizing air travel.